So another um, awkward segue. Um, <laughs> I'd like to talk, and then other people have had uh, questions about this on our forums and stuff. Um, we were talking a lot about uh, object representation, 3D yeah. modeling, and, and, and I mean, this lends itself very heavily to um, virtual space. I mean, so, and, and people are starting to talk about how will an HTM system or an intelligent system be embodied in, yeah. in, in, in the real world or yeah. in the virtual world? I mean, what does that feel, what does that look like? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's a good question. We don't really know the answer to that question. Obviously, um, you could apply it to something that has a body that's similar to an animal. Robotics is obvious. Uh, robotics right. is obvious. And by the way, robotics doesn't have to be a human-like body, too. Sure. You know, the rat whisks. Mm -hmm. it, it has an active sense moving its whiskers. And um, you could build a robot that whisks. You've got, you know, uh, bats of echolocation, and then you could build a HTM system that does oh, echolocation. Tons of sensors you could build, you could that. build something with lidar, which is yeah. a, which is just like scanning, but it's a three D yeah. vision system. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to stick with those kind of things. But there is, and I've talked about this many times, is that you could also have a virtual embodiment. Yeah. Um, the key criteria is you've got some world you're trying to learn the structure of and model. Mm -hmm. That world does not have to be physical. So just you and I last night at dinner, we were talking about how um, um, code, programmers code, is structured to it. Yeah, it's a, it's, you can explore it. It has you can explore it. There are links, there are procedure calls, there's yeah. subroutines. But it's far away from a visual representation yeah, that we would think yeah. about when we imagine. So the key issue in terms of like the new sensory motor stuff here mm -hmm. is that you have some, st some structured world that has features at some some type of location, it doesn't have to be a 3D location, it can be any dimensional, right. and, um, and that you're able to move a sensory organ or multiple sensory organs, move them through this world to sense different parts. Yeah. So just like I move my finger to sense different parts of this cup, I could move a code sensor that says, you know, this person likes to use, you know, this coding structure or whatever, then I can move it to different parts of the code and say where did they use that feature. Sure. Um, so this is very speculative. But and that's, act, that's taking action, following some type that's of That's a mode, it's basically a, well, it's, or it's just a behavior. It's I have a choice. It's a sensory modality that we don't have. It's a sensory modality we don't have, and it's a behavior that is basically, instead of moving my finger on some object, I'm moving yeah. this sensor through code space. So almost, when people talk about embodiment of AI, I always want to tell them, stop thinking like a human. Yeah, it's, it's very. Yeah. When we talk about AI embodiment. Right. It's not a human embodiment. Well, it could be, but we we're not. It could be, but, but that shouldn't be the goal. It shouldn't right? be the goal. In fact, I think almost certainly the vast, vast majority of the machine intelligence will not be anything at all like a human. Right. right? Nothing like a human. Right. Both right. in its right. sensory organs and its embodiment. It's such and, a pet peeve of mine. People, yeah, let's I know. Put, let's put a virtual face on the thing and give I it know, feelings. I mean, like, just don't let it. Don't let it bother you too much, man. Um, <laughs> I'll try. Yeah. I think the reality is, you know, when, when a new uh, technology comes along, people always imagine it applying to something they know. And reality is that it gets applied in ways that are totally different. And so, you know, when computers came first came along, people thought of like a human brain. We'll, we'll figure know. it out eventually. You know, now what are computers? There's a computer in that microphone, there's a computer in the camera, there's, yeah. you know, there's a computer probably somewhere in this chair, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but but we, don't, we don't think of them as human-like. And I, I think we, it's really hard to know where it's going to go, but you can almost be certain that the vast majority of these applications are not going to be human. And I think a very, very large percent of them will not be physical. Right. Um, I mean, but, we're going to try and slap human interface. We have to interact with these things. So, uh, right? Yeah, some way. Some we're going to try and make them um, amicable for us to uh, deal yeah, with. Maybe, them. or why not? Why, why can't they just feed their output into some other system and deal with it that way? Yeah. Um, I do think there will be issues. There, you know, I, I don't want to totally dismiss the physical embodiment because I think there are some cases where you need that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a know, ways down the road. The, may, the robotics yeah, is going to have yeah. to catch up a lot. Maybe, maybe if this is a good time to sort of end on a speculative note, um, I, I've often talked about, you know, if we ever want to, if we ever really want to live on like Mars or some other moon someplace, something yeah. like that, if we ever really want to leave the Earth uh, and go live in some other um, um, very hostile environment, we're probably going to have to have some sort of robotic systems that are intelligent to go out and fix things and build things and, sure. and make, you know, work in environments we can't work in. Prepare the space for Prepare us. Prepare the space for us. And, uh, you know, if, 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 if there's no atmosphere outside and you're going to get killed by cosmic radiation, it's nice to send some robot out there to go, you know, straighten the antenna on the TV, you know, it's, it's yeah. like whatever. Especially if you don't have to tell it, go straight. Yeah, it's right, just, you know, just go out and fix the problems. Like, yeah. you know, antennas on TV are so, so all damn.
Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Your microwave. Not getting good reception, Channel Five. Uh. <laughs> That's right. Deer go up. There's a you know the, the roof. The roof is leaking. Go up and fix it. Okay. You know you don't want. To. Um, so I think we're going to need to to do those things too. Mm -hmm. But those, there's no reason those have to look like humans either. It's like you know purpose built, right? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's uh, we're getting very speculative here, but that's a future that we need to. See, we can think about it, yeah. um, but we really need to get the, the details down right now. We have to sort of figure out how this whole thing works. Right.